The unknown embraces us, and we are encircled by mystery. Mysteries abound in every nook and cranny of our lives, and they cannot be confined behind a cocoon of normalcy. Science and technology are always evolving and progressing. This opens up entirely new avenues for researching not only the future and prospective methods to improve our huge knowledge and understanding of the cosmos, but also previous mysteries. Every day, new facts about the past, present and future are unearthed. Others, particularly extraterrestrial findings, raise more questions. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a close look at three mysterious discoveries. Release of Arctic Methane Could Accelerate Warming The Arctic is recognized as the epicenter of the dispute over the vulnerability of frozen methane reserves in the ocean, which have now been dubbed the sleeping giants of the carbon cycle, and if discharges pass a tipping threshold, global warming might accelerate. The question of when, or even if, they will be released into the atmosphere has been a source of substantial uncertainty in climate computer models, as the Arctic temperature is presently increasing more than twice as fast as the worldwide average. Researchers are concerned that the discovery of high amounts of strong greenhouse gas down to a depth of 350 meters in the Laptev Sea in Russia may have extreme climatic effects. The Arctic slope deposits contain a significant number of frozen methane and other gases, which are referred to as hydrates. Over the course of 20 years, methane has an 80-fold greater warming effect than carbon dioxide. Arctic hydrate destabilization was originally recognized as one of the foremost catastrophic possibilities for anthropogenic climate change by the United States Geological Survey. The academic Kel Dish 60-member team believes they are the first to determine that the release of methane is already underway throughout a large portion of the hillside 600 kilometers offshore. The emission of methane from Arctic permafrost regions, water and soils is known as Arctic methane release. Methane release is worsened by global warming, despite the fact that it is a long-term natural process. Because methane is a potent greenhouse gas, this has a detrimental impact. The Arctic is one of several natural sources of methane, a greenhouse gas. Meanwhile, a recent study showed that the release of methane from old carbon sources did not add much to the warming that happened in the last deglaciation, or the period after the last ice age. This occurred between 18,000 and 8,000 years ago, a time period that climate scientists are extensively studying because it is the last time global temperatures soared by 4 degrees centigrade, which is about what is anticipated for the planet by 2100. Many people believe that prehistoric methane emissions are not something to be concerned about in the 21st century, based on the findings of this study. This optimism, however, may well be mistaken. So what does this signify for climate change in the future? It means that, according to popular belief, carbon emissions from the warming Arctic may not be caused by the melting of long-frozen carbon capsules. Instead, the majority of emissions could be relatively new carbon created by freshly grown plants. This demonstrates that the age of the carbon emitted by the warming Arctic is less essential than the quantity and manner in which it is emitted. Over a hundred-year period, Methane is 34 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Because young carbon will likely account for the majority of Arctic emissions this century, we may not even be alarmed by ancient permafrost contributing significantly to present global warming. However, carbon that was formerly in soil or plant matter will continue to leak into the atmosphere, making the Arctic a significant source of carbon emissions. This will become more common as the Arctic summer becomes longer due to rising temperatures. The new findings should prompt the international community to take aggressive action on climate change, limiting how many natural cycles in the Arctic can exacerbate the problem. Strange circles appeared on the frozen surface of Lake Baikal being seen by astronauts. In many ways, Lake Baikal is extraordinary. It is the world's largest in terms of volume and deepest freshwater lake, being 1,637 meters at its deepest point. It is also one of the world's oldest lakes, being 25 to 30 million years old, 
with up to 7 kilometers of sediment deposited on the bottom. Because it is located in the Baikal Rift Valley, the lake has a long, thin and deep shape. Strange ice rings have been growing in Lake Baikal since 1969, but the actual mechanism behind their formation has remained a mystery for decades. Researchers have finally figured out what is causing these strange sightings, according to a new study published in the journal Limnology and Oceography. Astronauts on board the International Space Station saw a strange circular patch of thinned ice near the southern end of Lake Baikal in southern Siberia in late April 2009. Siberia is an isolated and freezing place, with ice, with ice cover that can last far into June. Its top view, a close-up astronaut snapshot, depicts a circle of thin ice, dark in hue, with a diameter of roughly 4.4 kilometers that serves as the focal point for ice breakup in the lake's southernmost reaches. The feature was initially observed on April 5, 2009, according to a series of MODIS pictures. Another very identical circle is then found at the lake's center, atop an underwater ridge that cuts the lake in half. Both rings were seen till April 20, 2009. Until April 24, when the circular piece of thin ice became a hole of open water, clouds covered the middle of the lake. In April 1994, during the STS-59 shuttle mission and 1985, similar circular ice patterns were observed in the same central section of the lake, though not quite as prominent during the STS-51B shuttle mission. Although the ring's origin is uncertain, the strange pattern indicates convection, tidal in the lake's water column. At this time of year, ice cover fluctuates frequently. The ice can melt nearly completely in a day, then freeze during the night. The rings arise as ice covers the ground and subsequently fade as the ice melts throughout April. Because of the pattern and look, the ice appears to be relatively thin. The main cause of this warm, deep water formation is unknown, but the study is ongoing to learn more about it. Existing evidence suggests that water from other rivers and wind patterns may have a role and that they originate in the autumn months before the ice freezes. For the time being, many secrets remain hidden within this ancient and vast lake. The mystery of the green iceberg may soon be solved. With their blue and white colors, icebergs are a sight to behold. Because ice absorbs more red light than blue light, these colors make sense for glaciers. Researchers have proposed a new theory that could explain why some Antarctic icebergs are tinted emerald green rather than the usual blue, potentially resolving a decades-old scientific puzzle. Ice absorbs more red light than blue light, which is why it is blue. When floating in seawater, most icebergs are white or blue, but explorers and sailors have reported witnessing strange green icebergs near particular sections of Antarctica since the early 1900s. For years, scientists have been fascinated by the green icebergs, but now glaciologists say in a new study that iron oxides in rock dust from Antarctica's mainland are suspected of making certain icebergs green. Following the discovery of massive levels of iron in East Antarctica's Amory Ice Shelf by Australian researchers, they devised a novel theory. Iron is an important nutrient in phytoplankton, the microscopic plants that make up the foundation of the ocean's food chain. However, iron is in little supply in many parts of the ocean. If the new theory is genuine, it means that when green icebergs fall off, they transport valuable iron from Antarctica's landmass to the open sea delivering this essential mineral to the creatures that maintain practically all marine life. It's like going to the post office and picking up a parcel, lead author Stephen Warren, a glaciologist and professor emeritus in the University of Washington's Department of Atmospheric Sciences said, the iceberg can send this iron out into the ocean far away, then melt and transfer it to phytoplankton that can use it as a nutrient. We used to think green icebergs were merely an unusual novelty, but now we believe they could be significant. To see if the theory holds up, the team planned to sample icebergs of various colors for their iron concentration. But what do you make of these three discoveries? 
Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.